All right, with the new game coming out sometime this year, you would assume. Hope it doesn't get delayed again. It's time to jump into a new game of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm going to be going with just the vanilla mode uh, this time. I don't really like the master mode. The enemies are a little too spongy for my liking and uh, get to scramble a little too much for weapons. So I'm just going to do a clean vanilla playthrough of the game as it was meant to be played. Spooky this was. Wake up, Link. Like it was yesterday. Gosh, this is a great opening to a Zelda game. I'm playing this around the same time as I am playing Skyward Sword, and uh, it's definitely a great difference. Very welcome. There's mystery. I've got I've got more questions than answers. is a Sheikah Slate. Take it. It will help guide you after your long slumber. Chess here. Let's see what we got. We got clothes. We got the trousers. Let's go. All right. So here's where they sh uh, shift in some of their tutorial stuff. But do we ha have any weapons? Or any other goodies? And yeah, we'll find them as we go. Hold the Sheikah Slate up to the pedestal. That will show you the way. Okay, we know the Sheikah Slate is the thing to use to do the stuff. Great opening to a game, though. We've been uh, locked away in this tomb for some reason. Zelda's telepathically talking to us, and we've got just uh, a ray Link, of light to run toward. You are the light. Our light. That must shine upon Hyrule once again. Now go. <laughs> I forgot how running, funny his running animation was. Here we go. This might be the, one of the best openings of all in all of gaming. And here we are. We are, we are that close to the final battle. To the castle right there. 
And, uh, <laughs> I've tried to raid the castle immediately myself. It's pretty hard. I kind of ran out of weapons. Okay, you're in the world. I'm trying not to spend so much time gathering, but uh, that means that we we'll want to grab the stuff that we need as we go. Oh, the beetle flew away. I don't know if the bleated rhino beetles will be important. The old man has to say. I beg your pardon, I do believe that is my baked apple. You can't just go around taking what you please. <laughs> oh, forgive me. I could not resist pulling your leg. Please help yourself. An apple and an open flame make for a succulent treat. It is a bit strange to see another soul in these parts. Who are you? Mm. Me. I'll spare you my life story. I'm just an old fool who's lived here alone for quite some time now. What brings a bright-eyed young man like you to the place like this? Where are we? Mm. Answering a question with a question. Fair enough. As I cannot imagine our meeting to be a simple coincidence, I shall tell you. This is the Great Plateau. According to legend, this is the birthplace of the entire kingdom of Hyrule. That temple there, long ago, was the site of many sacred ceremonies. Ever since the decline of the kingdom a hundred years ago, it has sat abandoned in a state of decay. Yet another forgotten entity, a mere ghost of its former self. Okay, I mean, am, am, am I supposed to go there? Okay, we'll go there. <laughs> we'll just head on over there. That could be useful. What's so cool about this is I can do a bunch of different things here. The, the thing that always draws my eye first is I want to dive in here, and then it's like, wow, I get a Korok seed. What does it mean? I can see him. I didn't know you kind of could see the children of the forest. Well, if you run into Hetsu, please return this to him. Will do. It's going to be great for fighting, at least comparatively. I'm going to take that fish. Oop. I keep wanting to, like, press, uh, press down on the control stick to hold, to, like, run. This game definitely has Japanese controls. Yeah, I... Oh. Oh. <laughs> getting phoned again. Head for the point marked on the map in your Sheikah Slate. Man, it's just so cool that, uh... This game had such a... It was like, it was like gonna be the, the Wii U's magnum opus. And part of me is, like... I, I got this day one with the Switch and uh, definitely happy with the way it turned out and everything, but part of me wishes that it was still a Wii U game, like only, or at least had a, a moment of Wii U exclusivity, because this would have really shown like, 
It just would have been that that great send off message for the console and a great prize for those of us who actually bought the Wii U. But alas, uh, that was not the that was not the deal. Okay, I'm trying to like throw this. Can I throw it? Nope. Nope. R button. Nope. Okay, R trigger. Okay. Okay. See what we can do here. <laughs> I don't know what makes me want to press that button to run. I don't want to press the X button. Now, the reason why I say the, the controls are very Japanese is because if you've played, like, kind of old PlayStation games, you can, um, you can sort of see what controls they would have based on if they were Western or, uh, Eastern games. And, uh, oh. There we go. Um, like, Japanese games would use the circle button to, uh, confirm things. You know, in, in Japan you would... Uh, show a circle to show like kind of a, a positive or an affirmative in um, in the West we would more so like cross something off or check the box and so the X button was kind of the primary button and so depending on, on which games you were playing you would either hit you would hit either button uh, especially when they didn't um, you know make it different in every region so it's a fascinating uh, difference to me and this game kind of has a similar thing where most, it seems like most AAA games nowadays have you push in the control stick to run. But this game just, you know, has the uh, X or the B button. I think I even changed it to the X button. It's supposed to be the B button and then you jump with X, but jumping with X uh, is not my speed. And, and that, that's what makes uh, running and jumping kind of weird in this game. Okay, so let's see, is the... That's not the place on my map. So we will go to the abandoned chapel later. Oh, if I get over that boulder. That could be cool, but do I have that bunch of patience? I sure don't. I'll tell you what I do have patience for. quite uh, the way I expected it to, but um, you can't complain with the results. Looks like that turned out just fine. Get a big seared steak for our troubles. Clubs here. So there's fun things that happen where I, I just took his weapon and, and so he, um, I didn't actually let the camera show up, but he gets angry at you for, uh, for doing that. Such a fun touch. Okay, now for my arrow, I can either aim with gyro or uh, the other thing. And if I hit him in the eye, I get a critical hit. They say head, but I, I feel like it more so means eye. Awesome, we got the traveler sword, we got the shield. 
Very nice. Shields are OP in this game. Uh, that's overpowered for uh, the non-gamers in the room. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into why later. Great Plateau Tower. And that fills out our map. Regional map extracted. You'll notice there's no uh, sidekick here that's constantly talking to you. Well, I say that. <laughs> you have been asleep for the past 100 years. The beast. When the beast regains its true power, this world will face its end. Boys, the beast. Now then, <laughs> that phrase makes me think of a different show. You must hurry, Link. Oh, this is so spooky. I love it. Before it's too late. The the show makes me think of is Over the Garden Wall, where there's this antagonist called uh, the Beast. Beware the Beast, boys. <laughs> it's a good time. Very uh, cool show to watch uh, during. Halloween. All right, we're gonna try and do a speed run this. Oh yeah, I, think, I guess this is kind of worked out this way. They want me to do this. It's kind of awkward though. Oh! It's our boy. My my, it would seem we have quite the enigma here. Hmm. This tower and others just like it have erupted across the land one after the other. It's almost as though a long dormant power has awoken quite suddenly. If you do not mind me asking, did anything odd occur while you were top of the tower? I heard a voice. Well now, a voice you say. And did you happen to recognize this mysterious voice? No. I see. Well, that is unfortunate. I assume you caught the sight of that atrocity enshrouding the castle. Hmm. That is Calamity Ganon. One hundred years ago, that vile entity brought the kingdom of Hyrule to ruin. It appeared suddenly and destroyed everything in its path. So many innocent lives were lost in its wake. For a century, the very symbol of our kingdom, Hyrule Castle, has managed to contain that evil, but just barely. There it festers, building its strength for the moment it will unleash its blight upon the land once again. It would appear that moment is fast approaching. Oh. I must ask you, courageous one. Do you intend to make your way to the castle? I do. <laughs> I had a feeling you would say that. Here on this isolated plateau, we are surrounded on all sides by steep cliffs with no way down. If you were to try and jump off, well, 
no death could be more certain or more foolish. Hmm. Of course, if you had a paraglider like mine, that would be quite another story. Paraglider? <laughs> oh, piqued your interest, have I? Yes, I didn't come soaring down here on my own feathery wings, you know. Hmm. Worry not, I will happily agree to give you my paraglider, but not for nothing. Hmm. Let's see now. How about a trade for a bit of treasure that slumbers nearby? Our first quest. Hmm. Come, let me show you something. Do you see that structure there? The one shining with a strange light. It began glowing at the exact moment those towers rose up from the ground. <laughs> I would think such a place might house some sort of treasure, wouldn't you? Treasure for that paraglider. A fair exchange, I believe. Okay, let's do it. Never have enough arrows. And here we have uh, one of the few major criticisms I have with the game is that uh, it seems like items break a little too fast. It seems like I'm always kind of shuffling through my inventory and I'd rather just kind of keep the, the momentum and flow of the battle going, but I know that's a divisive part of this this game. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. I, I like the benefit of it, where it kind of forces you to adapt your skills to particular situations and not depend on any certain weapon type, but I don't feel like the weapons are that different from each other in the first place. I mean, outside of the two-handed and one-handed difference. Um, but usually you're trading quite a lot of power for the versatility of having a shield. <clears throat> anyway. Let's make our way over here. Oh, 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 oh no, 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 didn't mean to do that. That was a close one. If you run out of stamina on the water, it's not pretty. Oh, I bought the DLC. Let's see what we get in the chest. A ruby! Descend. sets foot in this shrine, I am Omanao. And I didn't have time to read that because I was trying to turn the fan on on my Nest app and then I dropped my phone and it clanked on the desk and here we are. Distilling room. Here's where we get our first magic power. This game just, like, I mean, I know it doesn't really 
add that much, but like holding the physical Wii U gamepad and, and using this stuff would probably be so cool. At some point I'll actually have to try the Wii U version of this game and see if it's, uh, if it functions better. I know that it, um, some of the controls can feel a little more clean because you've got all that touchscreen real estate to switch weapons and whatnot. But then, um, the, uh, the issue it has is, uh, performance problems. Anytime you incorporate the Wii U gamepad, you have to spend, uh, resources that you may or may not have. Oh! Ha! Oh. <laughs> Gosh, that is so funny. I hope the game saved. That was just a little goof. Man, you 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 miss you miss the um what's it called? Um the rolling feature in the other Zelda games. I don't know if I want these over there, but I I feel like I do. Game plays a lot with physics. Oh, come on! Come on! I had that. And check out this little guy. Oh, didn't time it right. Practice that shield reflection. And there we have it. So I can also get this. I don't know if I have the right stuff for it. Don't. Funny thing is I can also, I think, open the door like this. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, I could probably get that with the paraglider eventually. Uh, but unless it's like a one-of-a-kind piece of armor, a lot of the treasure isn't really all that worth collecting. You have proven to possess the resolve of a true hero. Oops, I'm gonna skip it. <clears throat> May the goddess smile upon you. And we go to the loading screen. So there are uh, 200 of those in the game. Uh, I'm gonna be doing eh, as, eh, as much as I, I feel like. They're fun to do, um, but there are a lot of them. It's a lot to digest. It seems you managed to get your hands on a spirit orb. Well done. How did you know? <laughs> Clairvoyance, so ho, or perhaps something similar. As one gets older, it can become more difficult to see what is right before one's own eyes. However, that which was once hidden from view can often be crystal clear. <laughs> but perhaps that is not true for everyone. <laughs> ho! The appearance of those towers in the awakening of the shrine. They are connected. Hmm. It is all connected to that Sheikah slate you carry on your hip. What do you mean? Oh. It has been quite some time since I have seen that Sheikah slate. Long ago, a highly advanced tribe known as the Sheikah inhabited these lands. The great power of their wisdom saved the kingdom time and time again. But their ancient technology disappeared long ago, or so it is said. It is interesting, however, to think... How something like that survived all this time hidden away in a shrine. Hmm. These shrines are tucked away in numerous places all across the land. On this plateau alone, I believe there are still three more. <laughs> Bring me the treasure from each of those shrines and I will give you the paraglider. So I need more now? Hmm. I said treasure, but I never said there will only be one treasure. Whether it is one treasure or four, what's the difference for a young go-getter like yourself? Since I'm feeling generous, I will also teach you a trick for finding shrines. It was always best to survey the area by looking around from a high point. Let's see here. How about you make your way to the top of the tower again? Got it. 
<laughs> I admire your eagerness, but allow me to teach you something else before you go. Take a look at the map on the Sheikah Slate. Hmm. You see those blue icons? You should recognize the cave from where you woke, the shrine you came from in the tower. You can travel instantly to any of those places with the Sheikah Slate. Hmm. Or so I heard, some quite some time ago. I do not know if it actually works as such. Cool, you're gonna give me the, do, uh, the option to do it or not, and I don't have to, so I'm not going to. I'm going to get this treasure chest. And I'm going to get this treasure chest. love some opal. Gotta have the opal. Alright, um... Hero's Path Mode is unlocked. Yeah, it's just kind of a funny feature. Kind of should be in the game originally. Which I, I don't know if you have to pay for that. <laughs> if, you, if that's part of the paid DLC, that's funny. Well, this is a tar pit, so I can't go swimming in here. I do not have the wherewithal to get that, but it's okay. The funny thing about this game uh, is, like, you see the treasure box and you, you want to discover what's inside there. But let's say even, you know, I get a, like, 75 power giga weapon. It's not really going to be worth anything to me uh, later on in the game. Or, like, you know, after, I, after like, a, five minutes, you know, I can, I can fight one or two enemies with it and then it's gone forever. So, um, I'm not too into that stuff. No, I don't have a weapon. <laughs> cool. Uh, nope, not that one. Not that one. I need to press the Y button, then reach for a weapon. Right, let's get this traveler sword. It's cool how the boar was interacting with uh, the bokos and kind of distracted them, giving me an opening. That is one thing, there, there's not too many enemies in this game. I think probably like less than 10 like actual enemies that you can fight. But uh, <clears throat> um, the ones that you can fight are really well designed. So you can also hunt in this game, just like Minecraft. You can kind of see the, the inspirations for this game. It's uh, very much inspired by Minecraft, Assassin's Creed. Um, I forgot the other one, but I feel like they covered that in a developer interview. I could be wrong. Seems like a bad idea. Let's do it. All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> Still coming after me? Nope. Mind your own business. I want that heat. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Whoa! Oh man. Oh man. Boss is up there. Oh gosh! That did too much damage. My bow is bad damage for what? What? I cannot get a good angle at him. No! Oh. 
Dude, this guy does no damage. No! I don't know the controls. Okay. So... That doesn't cancel. X cancels. <laughs> These controls! Ugh! Do I try it again? Sure, why not? Why not? Not doing anything important here. The bees are still after me. It's gonna have to claw grip to run and turn the camera at the same time. It's it's a little weird. Uh, where the problem starts to set in. I don't know if I have enough uh, inventory. Oh, what? I was on top. arrow. Come on. Well, that was a fun little mini boss. A little repetitive, but fun nonetheless. Looks like I got some goodies. Figure out what they do later on in the game.
Okay, so I don't know if there's anything in the pond. Pretty sure there is in the Eastern Abbey. Nice. It's kind of giving a clue that if you strike flint with uh, some wood down on the ground, you can create a campfire. Grab some apples on the way. Come on, Link. I know you're not Mario, but... Goodness, my man. You work on those jumps. We got skeletons. Hmm, that's pretty good damage. I wonder if it's like super frail though. My memory does not serve me. Bridge that's broken. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's so unnatural to, like, hold down the X button and press the B button. These are the same guys that made Mario games for years where you'd hold Y and press B. What are we doing here? You just made Super Mario 3D World before this. Search. Check out these robots. Pretty iconic looking. Uh oh. Alright, if this thing hits me, I'm done. Ooh! Do that, it's done. Shields are OP, man. These things are terrifying at first. I remember when I first got this game, I was uh, running frantically. I couldn't do nothing against this. And it's cool that they put one in, in uh, this early in the game. Like I said, not, not very many different types of enemies in this game, but the ones that they do have, they make great use of. <laughs> oh, that's hideous. <laughs> But I guess uh, kind of fun that that's in the game. The bomb trial. Let's get our new power here. the way that the hand is just dangling still alive somehow so we got the remote bomb in two different shapes and this is definitely one of the most versatile uh, runes that are in the game forgot how to use it though so like I can press Y to just drop it uh, I know our trigger will throw up but can I roll it? I don't know. They'll look that up at some point. Oh, 
I keep wanting to press the trigger, not the the bumper. Oh, I can't hit it hit it away like in Smash Bros. I guess that's how I can kick it. Very nice. Ah, oh, the inventory is full. Not anymore. I want to know in the comments, was anybody else thrown off by Breath of the Wild's controls, or is it just me? I'm okay if it's just me. I just don't, I don't, I don't feel like I'm the only one. <laughs> I thought it was far enough away. Man, that's what Smash really captured is the, uh, the overwhelming range of this thing. There's like a faster way to eat, like in Minecraft. Uh, oh, no, no. How do I drop? Just drop it. No. Is it R2 to just drop it? Come on. <laughs> Go. In. something wrong uh, is no X just puts it away let's do a there we go that's how you set it down the rest of the buttons just drop it what's the point of that I, I don't know but you can see where we can have lots of fun with all the different stuff that this does uh, I guess I, I dude I could also just like toss nope Nice. Uh, over here we got a different thing. that in a second. Let's so go see this goodie. <laughs> That's fun. But of course, I'm holding this, which is why that doesn't work, I guess. There we go. Wait, what was this for? Did I need this for something? Oh well. Now these rock walls mean nothing to me. Back daytime again. Breath of the Wild is a pretty, pretty brisk day-night cycle. And there we see our next shrine that we need to commute to. They're really 
do a good job of making you want that paraglider. <laughs> But the Great Plateau is really just an awesome starting area. It's it's a playground that you can get lost in, but you can't... Uh, there's not much danger of you uh, getting hurt too badly here um, outside of, like, a few choice encounters that are eh, quite well-placed, I think. Definitely a great place to learn how to intro a game if you're, uh, if you're wondering... <laughs> oh, get the flurry rush. Hey, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, he's done. Okay, I can't take any more melee weapons, but I've got a stick. No arrows, huh? Did I get rid of my axe? I sure did. That was a mistake, ladies and gentlemen. That was a mistake. But I did take down a boss, so what do you do? The bombs are a great resource. I could I think I could have also used those. Check this out. The old man's terror is the great way, the best way to read. On this desolate plateau, the only pleasure that brings me comfort is cooking. And today I outdid myself. Truly, I created the perfect dish. I call it spicy meat and seafood fry. The recipe not only restores health, but also keeps me warm, even when traveling in the snowy mountains. Very nice. With this dish on my side, I no longer have need of that itchy, warm doublet. I do not know how I allowed this to happen, but it seems I forgot to write down a very important recipe. I know it contained raw meat and spicy pepper, however, I simply cannot remember what I used. My age is catching up to me. Uh, what can we get rid of? I feel like these are going to break super fast. Also, it's weird. They're, they're just kind of weird. A torch. <sighs> See, as useful as that is, I can also use a Boko Goblin weapon, so I'll just stick with that. Pitchfork is just a spear, but super weak. I still don't have any arrows. Oh, I can get him? Go check it out. Go check it out. Oh, well, he's distracted. You got any arrows on you? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Ooh, that looks awesome. 
All right, so we go through this again. It's probably the easiest way to cycle through weapons. But yeah, it's kind of a funny cycle. The game needs to constantly be throwing weapons at you if uh, you are to be getting any of the new stuff that they're throwing at you. And, um... I mean, sometimes when the weapon... when your, like, collection is in sync and you're kind of breaking weapons as you're collecting them, it, it works well. Other times, not so much. Bomb arrows, that's a good get this early on. Alright, let's travel up here. There is a pretty cool, um, set piece. That is also just so delightfully fun. Such a cool part of this game. And they showed it in some of the trailers and stuff. Oh, the man is over here. I think I know what he's going to tell me, but let's uh, see what he has to say. Fancy that, so we meet again. What are you doing? I thought this tree here might make for a, some good firewood. Hmm. However, getting a tree to follow exactly where you want it to is quite an art. The trick is to turn your hips so that they face uh, where you want the tree to land. Hmm. So, I see you found my axe. Why not help me f give it a few swings? I'm working up quite a sweat here, but these bones could use a break. Rest easy. Because your boy Link has got it down. And you cross this. <laughs> what a fun way to traverse. This is pretty much the only time you ever do that, or need to do that, but, uh, you know. Just, uh, speaks to how well of a first area this is, even if you, uh, don't actually end up completely, uh, using all the tips that you learned here. Gotta mind the range of that. Especially this early on in the game, where, honestly, <clears throat> the hardest part of any Zelda game is like the first part. It's the only time you're really in any danger of dying because you don't have any empty bottles yet and you only have three hearts. Not that you need empty bottles in this game. Got fire arrows, very nice addition. Uh-oh. Might have reached a bit of a dead end here. That's a little disappointing. Huh, the falcon. I don't remember seeing any birds here. Ugh. Oh, okay. So this this set piece is pretty much just designed for that like reward. Totally unnecessary. Um, which you see like there, I, I I collected I don't know like a weapon or something, and um, <clears throat> that's sort of the, uh, the issue, isn't it now? That I'm not gonna need that weapon in like five minutes. I guess I can sit here, but can I cook here? Okay, I just lit the fire. <laughs> apples on fire. Because you need that dish to cook in. No dishless cooking around here. Suspicious. It's not. Oh, you know what? I needed a place to cook. Hopefully these goblins got one. They do. Very nice. Yep. <laughs> 
<laughs> just a little poke after that. Oh, I'm liking the spear this early on in the game. Okay, now the cooking system. Let's see how we can do this. Light this on fire. Light that on fire. And then we can go in here and grab... Let's see, let's grab meat. And cook. Okay, we got 10 minutes of cold resistance from that. Um, and then let's make another. Ooh, double cold resistance. That's how we do it around here. That's how we do it around here. We just have to heat it up to eat it up. There we go. Ten and a half minutes of cold resistance. I want to pick these up just in case we run out of time over here. Game has this fun visual effect to show that it's cold. I guess we're not seeing that right now. Um. That boat looks awesome to use, but I don't think I have the means to actually do that at the moment. The ancient screw. <laughs> Legends speak of this device used to hold machines together. Lots of campfires. Just to uh, give you a little bit of crutch to lean on if you need to warm up. Alright, there's the tower. The, the, the hut? <laughs> the Sheikah hut? Uh oh. About to see another one of those. <laughs> there will be another pack right here. Is my spider sense working? Fun little note here, when you uh, click in, it shows like a, the temperature radar and uh, Link will look different on the screen based on his condition. Okay, I need to rotate this, but how do I do that? Let's try and just set it down, grab it a different way. I gotta say, it's kind of interesting, the the game, the way the game limits you in the Great Plateau is, makes a lot more moments like that a little more meaningful. Whereas when you have uh, the paraglider in tow, and there's basically nothing you can't do. Ain't no mountain high enough, as they say. Cliff. <laughs> Just 
my old trick of saving stamina. Find like a somewhat flat piece of ground to just kind of wait on. Juicy steak. Man. <laughs> Why does the food in this game look so delectable? Huh. There'd be some way to get it. Oh, I know, what I know what's up. I know what's up. I've been here before. Purposes to open the door and then op then open the the thing. You think it would just happen in one convenient little loading screen, but you know, what do I know? Since you do this two hundred times and all, <laughs> the cryon is trial. About to get that drip. This one's super cool. Love the Cryonis. It's very fun looking. Not as many battle applications as the rest of them. Oh. <laughs> Do something. Break it from under him, he'd topple over or something, but you know, can't always get what we want. Okay, Link. The prize is up here. Now that I'm up here, I kind of want to make out where my next shrine is. Is it the one? I don't think that... No, that's like outside of the plateau. Um, I went all through here, so it's got to be in this region. Or on top of Mount Hylia. I could also see it being there. 
really should have followed the man's advice, but I'm like, yeah, I've played this game before. But let's check out Mount Hylia. That makes sense to me. Whoa! Did a Boko Goblin throw that at me? Oh. Uh, da, 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 da. Nice. that we go on, got going on in this world. They were very smart, the way they kind of scaled this, and uh, it's almost become too much in these open-world games where they're often post-apocalyptic. I, I also think of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, which has a lot of interesting parallels to this game. Uh, it's smart. It's a smart setting, because then you don't have to populate the world as much as you otherwise would to make it feel believable. You know, I definitely believe that this is, like, the amount of population that we've got here. We've got small little concentration uh small concentrations of people in, in in different encampments but we've mostly just got barren wilderness and monsters here definitely buy that part of this game hey it's the old man the fierce cold atop these mountains can take quite a toll as the night sets in breathtaking view this may be the best place to get a full view of the, of the entire plateau. Did you know about the scope on your Sheikah Slate? Look through it and you can stick a pin anywhere you'd like to mark on the map. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> you, well, you did well to make it f this far without proper clothing. <laughs> Please take this warm doublet as a reward for your tenacity. Oh, cool. Hmm. I really like this, anyway. I think it, it's a it's a good look for Link. <clears throat> kind of looks like it could have been his costume in this game, although they went with the blue shirt thing, which I like too. Um, yeah, I'm a little confused here. Is that it? Nope. That's that's outside of the Great Plateau. So we gotta look this way? This way. Dude, I'm lost. This is a little embarrassing. I mean, I, I, I suppose it could be over here. It's the only part of town I haven't explored. Quite the drop off. Uh, climb down. Let's just see how far down we can get. All right, this is a bad idea. I can already tell. But you know what? We're just gonna try it. I, I I've never made much of a career of climbing down. Uh, mostly because it's kind of useless after the paraglider shows up.
But I wonder when the paraglider came into into being as they were testing this. I wonder if they, the developers felt like it, the game felt a little sluggish without it. Because now everybody's starting to put the paraglider in their games. What was that sound? Okay, very nice. Oh, I forgot about that. If you switch bomb types, it resets the cooldown. Or each bomb has their own cooldown. There's something over here. Sheesh. Where am I going wrong here? Oh, might as well explore this little cave. Take no damage from that. <laughs> That's funny. I suppose that's useful. Well, okay then. So we've explored, uh, everywhere. Except for, I guess, this area. Let's go to the tower. Let's, let's follow his... 
um, advice. Nope, I'm trying to just, just, uh, travel. Thank you very much. There it is. Oh, it was over there. Oh, not that. Um. Not that. Uh, how do I use my... Oh, it's whistling. <laughs> I use my Sheikah slate. There we go. There we go. Okay. Oh, what a commute. What a commute. Can't believe I was already going the right way. Shame on me. I didn't do it the way the game wanted me to, and now I'm paying for it. I forgot how to do the... That's it. Okay. Uh... It's funny, you can kind of use that move to get into all sorts of shenanigans. Of glitch the game and whatnot. Where am I going? This way. Very nice. Very nice. This is the kind of commuting I want to do. Oh, put it away. Put it away. Hoi! is if I landed with my shield would I have broken my fall? <laughs> right, let's save and then give it a try. Testing. <laughs> no dice. Oh man. So the struggle is real before you get the paraglider. Would have thought I'd be getting this many game overs in non-master mode. Okay, so do it go down the boring way. No, 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 no! I thought I was gonna. I was gonna do that like jumping move you do to go a little bit faster. Oh, on one hand, I want that. On one hand, I do want that. On another hand, I'm just not patient. But we're gonna we're gonna make time for it. We'll regain our stamina. Oh, we can just keep it moving. Okay, I have to be able to make this jump now. Thank goodness. What a commute.
Okay, we got the stasis, which is certainly a fun one. We can um, do all sorts of crazy stuff with this one. But for now, we are just going to solve puzzles. I had time and then I didn't. Alright, gotta sort through the inventory. I suppose it's also a good time to eat. Is it gonna drop out? <laughs> it's like, is it just waiting for me? our fourth spirit orb. <laughs> With this, you've now acquired all the spirit orbs from the shrines on this plateau. <laughs> oh, extraordinary. <laughs> That means it is finally time. Link, it is finally time for me to tell you everything, but first... Hmm. Imagine an X on your map, with the four shrines as the endpoints. Find the spot where those lines intersect. I shall wait for you there. Do you understand? Where the two lines connect the shrines will cross. There I will be waiting. <gasps> Creepy. Um... Yeah, so he's gonna be at the time temple. I mean, like, where else? Where else would he be? Luckily, we are somewhat close to there. No. Oh. No, uh, no shield gliding here. That is a fall that will end me. No, 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 no! Okay. Okay, alright. I thought I was done. I didn't mean to, like, get off the cliff, but you need to, like, get to the edge for the option to show up. It really looks like more of a hill. We got a little bit of one. No, Link, no, 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 no. Down, not that. Oh, gosh. I tell ya, I tell ya, these controls take some getting used to. Uh, two choice for the orbs. We're going with the stamina vessel.
Go and bring peace to Hyrule. Oh! The blessing of the goddess has made you that much more resilient, I see. Hmm. Here I am. Get up here, quickly. Oh. And, uh, depletes just as fast as the rest of it. Right, let's try and figure out a way up here. It's glowing again. That probably doesn't mean anything. Oh, there's a ladder. Nifty. Done there, young one. Now then, the time has come to show you who I truly am. I was King Rome Bosphoramus Hyrule. I was the last leader of Hyrule, a kingdom which no longer exists. <sighs> The Great Calamity was merciless. It devastated everything in its path, lo, a century ago. It was then that my life was taken away from me. And since that time, here I have remained in spirit form. I did not think it wise to overwhelm you while your memory was still fragile. So rather than that, I thought it best to assume a temporary form. Forgive me. I think you are now ready. Ready to hear what happened 100 years ago. To know Calamity Ganon's true form, one must know the story from an age long past. The Demon King was born into this kingdom, but his transformation into malice created the horror you see now. Stories of Ganon were passed from generation to generation in the form of legends and fairy tales. But there was also a prophecy. The signs of a resurrection of Calamity Ganon are clear, and the power to oppose it lies dormant beneath the ground. We decided to heed the prophecy and began excavating large areas of land. It wasn't long before we discovered several ancient relics made by the hands of our distant ancestors. These relics, the divine beasts, were giant machines piloted by warriors. We also found the Guardians, an army of mechanical soldiers who fought autonomously. This coincided with ancient legends oft repeated throughout our land. We also learned of a princess with a sacred power and her appointed knight chosen by the sword that seals the darkness. It was they who sealed Ganon away using the power of these ancient relics. One hundred years ago, there was a princess set to inherit a sacred power and a skilled knight at her side. It was clear that we must follow our ancestors' path. 
We selected four skilled individuals from across Hyrule and tasked them with the duty of piloting the Divine Beasts. With the princess as their commander, we dubbed these pilots Champions, a name that would solidify their unique bond. The princess, her appointed knight, and the rest of the champions were on the brink of sealing away Ganon. But nay. Ganon was cunning, and he responded with a plan beyond our imagining. from deep below Hyrule Castle, seize control of the Guardians and the Divine Beasts, and turn them against us. The Champions lost their lives, those residing in the castle as well. The appointed knight bravely collapsed while defending the princess. And thus, the Kingdom of Hyrule was devastated absolutely by Calamity Ganon. However, the princess survived to face Ganon alone. Link, you are our final hope. The fate of Hyrule rests with you. That princess was my own daughter, my dear Zelda. And the courageous knight who protected her right up to the very end. That night was none other than you, Link. You fought valiantly when your fate took an unfortunate turn. And then you were taken to the Shrine of Resurrection. Here you now stand, revitalized 100 years later. The words of guidance you have been hearing since your awakening are from Princess Zelda herself. Even now, as she works to restrain Ganon from within Hyrule Castle, she calls out for your help. However, my daughter's power will soon be exhausted. Once that happens, Ganon will freely regenerate himself, and nothing will stop him from consuming our land. Considering that I could not save my own kingdom, I have no right to ask this of you, Link. But I am powerless here. You must save her, my daughter, and do whatever it takes to annihilate Ganon. Somehow, Ganon has maintained control over all four divine beasts, as well as those guardians swarming around Hyrule Castle. I believe it would be quite reckless for you to head directly to the castle at this point. I suggest that you make your way east out to one of the villages in the wilderness. Follow the road out to Kakariko village. There you will find the elder Impa. She will tell you more about the path that lies ahead. Consult the map on your Sheikah slate for the precise location of Kakariko village. Make your way past the twin summits of the dueling peaks. From there, follow the road as it proceeds north. Hmm. Go on, here's a paraglider. Just as I promised. The game is now open for business. With that, you should be able to safely fly off the cliffs in the surrounding area. And I think that's it. Hmm. I've told you everything I can. Link, you must save Hyrule. All right, new objective is destroy Ganon. I love how early they bring it in uh, to that. It's so cool. All right, um, I'm gonna switch to this and switch to this and look at that. Oh my goodness, the payoff, the absolute payoff of this moment cannot be understated. So cool.
This is like one of the singular best features in any sort of open world or adventure game. I don't know if they invented the concept, but my goodness, this combined with the climb anything feature is exactly what I was looking for in a video game. Cannot state that enough. Um, and with that, we are done with the Great Plateau. There's still other stuff to do here, but it all the, the, the treasure here that I would get for exploring wouldn't really be worth anything. I also don't think there are any more shrines, uh, or maybe maybe they appear like later on in the game or something. But um, but yeah, that's uh, while well, there's a lot more shenanigans to be had. It's mostly just kind of picking fights with Boko goblins. And uh, we got bigger fish to fry. We got to go destroy Ganon. That's our, our new our new mission. Um, all right. <laughs> After that very weird animation, that's where we'll leave this first episode. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. I'll see you next time.